I'd like to start by apologizing for the sound quality. We're in Barcelona, so I don't have my normal rig, so I'm sort of setting up a recording in the apartment we're renting, and uh, hopefully it'll be good enough. But I discovered today something I wanted to show you, and uh, was kind of excited about it. I was able to take a console app in ASP.NET Core RC2, the nightly builds, and get it to actually serve uh, some web data. I'm not going to build a whole website or anything. I'm going to do really a hello world. But I want to show you how the little pieces move together by uh, creating a console app and then converting it over. There's not a lot of steps to it, um, so this should be pretty quick. But uh, hopefully you learn some of the ideas that they're trying to get across and why they made some of the changes in RC2. Let's get started. I'm going to start by just going over uh, to a working directory I have and I'm going to make a new project called fun with nightlies. Let's go in there. Command line tooling, the CLI tooling for ASP.NET Core RC2. And I know that because we now have a command called .NET. If you haven't played with this, this is a replacement for DNX and DNU. And we'll also see that DNVM sort of are, sort of is going away for now. But .NET is the unified command line interface for all of the ASP.NET Core stuff. And we're going to do all this stuff with just an editor in the console because the tooling for Visual Studio and such just aren't working yet. So uh, this isn't the way you're going to develop day to day, but it should be a uh, preview of sort of what they're thinking when they release this uh, RC2 in a few days. I know that uh, .NET is installed correctly because I can go ahead and use the dash dash version to see that we're looking at the preview one of this tooling. So .NET, I'll just do uh, help real quick. There's a command line interface for doing things that you're used to doing, like restoring NuGet packages, building, publishing, running, running tests, those sorts of things, even packaging up uh, NuGet packages. And it's also going to be an ex extendable so you can create your own commands. But for now, we're uh, going to look at some of these built-in commands in building our own project. And the first one we're going to look at is .NET new. If we do .NET new in our new directory, it actually is going to create a C Sharp project, a really simple console app. Let's look at this in code so we can see what this actually looks like. Again, none of the tooling currently is working on my machine, so we're going to do everything at the console. The project JSON is the same old project JSON you've dealt with in ASP.NET uh, 5 and the RC1, except that uh, some things have been moved around as necessary. Um, but one of the biggest changes is this dependency we're seeing here. This dependency is the actual runtime you're going to run uh, on top of. So instead of there being DNVM to install them locally, we're specifying what the platform is that we want to run on top of. And uh, this is essentially saying we want to run this a .NET Core app, and this is the version we're going to be going against. And this is a, the, a bit, pretty big change from the RC1 stuff, and it'll take some time to get used to it. But again, once you have it included here, it's not a big difference. It's just the runtime is just another dependency. It's a special type of dependency, but it's just another dependency. We can also see down here that the frameworks, instead of the old DX Core or DNX451, uh, they've changed these to be a little, uh, to use the conventional naming that we're seeing with PCLs and other types of libraries. So the Net Core App 1.0 is the old DX Core. It's the old .NET Core that's going to run on multi-platforms. And uh, this import is, is hinting at what level of compatibility we need. Uh, I'm still trying to get my head around exactly what the imports is for completely, but as it's been explained to me, it's this uh, idea of what's the level of compatibility we need. We're saying we want it to be compatible with the cross-platform DNX core uh, that'll work on Linux and Macs and PCs and such. So we haven't done much here. Let's go ahead and look at the program.cs, and you've probably seen this a million times in C Sharp. It's a void main, and then we're just writing out a console. So now that we have this essential uh, startup code, let's go back and look at the console. And let's use .NET to restore the packages. 
Now it's going to try to get the packages and it's going to complain that it could not find uh, a number of things. And what's interesting here is that all it did was attempt to restore based on the public uh, NuGet, um, based on the public NuGet API. And none of these nightly builds are in that. So we actually have to have our own NuGet, nuget.config. You could put the paths to all the nightly builds into your machine level nuget.config that we can see here. And here it's actually my, my app data. Um, but I prefer to have one on uh, in the project so that I know uh, that I'm not, you know, changing some behavior across different projects where it might actually grab it from one of those. So to do this, I'm actually going to copy a nuget.config that I already have, and you can get it from uh, GitHub. Uh, I have a GitHub project called github.com slash seanwildermuth slash asp.net rc2 from scratch. And uh, that has this uh, copy of the same NuGet file, but I'm just going to copy it from my projects ASP net two from scratch, and it's just called NuGet.config. If we look at this NuGet.config, you can see that we're getting uh, packages from a, a number of different sources. There's the .NET CLI, the .NET Core, and then the RC. These are all my get. Um, sources for those nightly builds. We also uh, included here is the X unit nightly builds, which I'm also using for some of my projects that are running tests, but I'm not going to cover any of that. Uh, don't worry about that. So let's go back and try the .NET restore again. And this time it's going to do a lot more work and it's going to finally build our whole project. Now that we have the uh, NuGet packages, we can use .NET to actually build this. Compilation succeeded, and then I can do .NET run, and we'll see that all it does is say hello world. Now notice it says previous was previously compiled, skipping compilation. That means that .NET run will build and then run your projects as well. And as you're doing development, that's something that, you know, assuming you're not using Visual Studio, you're probably going to just run and not do the build. But for, for my needs, I'm going to do build to make sure that we have all the code actually working. So back in the code, let's make this a web server. And the first thing we're going to need is a new dependency. This dependency is going to be .NET Core.Server.Kestrel, which is our web server. Now, this is the same reference that uh, RC1 projects had, except that they're called ASP.NET Core now, and not just ASP.NET. And I'll just tell it to go and get the latest 1.0 version, which, because I'm using the NuGet file, is going to get an RC2 version of it. So let's save that. And that's the only reference we're going to need for our tiny little web server. And let's do .NET restore again. And this time it's going to go ahead and get those different files for us. So we now have all the pieces that we need to go ahead and change our code. Let's come back over to program. And I'm going to change the namespace to just be the same as the project. And we'll see why that comes into play in a minute. But instead of doing the console log here, what I really want to do is start up a web server. So I can do that with a class called web host builder. So I'm going to create a new web host builder and it has a fluent syntax. So I can say add Kestrel. All right. Use Kestrel. So we're going to use the Kestrel server. Use startup. And here I'm going to specify a class that we're going to build in a minute that will be the startup for our web server. And I'll just call that actually startup as well. Then we're going to build the server. Whoops. And then just run it. I'm not even going to store this anyplace. We're just going to do this all online because this is going to block as the, uh, as the web server just sits there and runs. And we're going to use, need a using statement for ASP net core dot hosting. That's where this web host builder lives in hosting. Back over here, let's see if this builds now. Seems like it mostly builds, except it can't find that startup class. So let's go back. 
Let's add a new file for startup. And I'll create a new class. And uh, the startup class can just be a class that manages that startup, but it needs either con the configure or the configure services method you're probably used to from uh, earlier versions of ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET 5. And I'm not even going to include code here, just a method called configure. That's, that should be enough for now. If we come back and .NET build, we can see it actually runs. And at this point, it's an, actually, it's an actual web server. How do we know this? Let's run it. You can see here it's now listening on localhost 5000. When we go to localhost 5000, we're getting a 404 because at this point, there's no middleware actually listening. So the default behavior here is if no one's handled it in the configure method, in the list of things that the configure method can do, it's going to return a 404 because evidently no one needed it, right? We're not doing anything yet. Problem, probably technically not a web server at this point, but at least we got it to listen on, on a port for a web request. We're just not, we're not fulfilling it. So how do we fulfill this? We fulfill it by actually uh, using, by actually uh, responding or creating a response when a request comes in. Before we can do this, we're going to need application builder. That's a interface that allows us to add middleware. And I believe that's in using Microsoft ASP.NET Core dot hosting. I'm sorry, dot build, dot builder. And uh, so what, what are we gonna do? Here we could do things like add different kinds of middleware, but all we wanna do is respond. So I'm gonna actually say run, which is going to allow us to create a terminating piece of middleware that's expected to return some response. So we're going to run by supplying a lambda. And this is literally some code to run as every request comes in. And in our case, we're going to respond to it. So I'm going to add a, a lambda here. I'm going to make it an asynchronous lambda because the call we need to make is a, a waitable. And it passes in an HTTP context object. So we can actually look at context at the request if we wanted to look at things. But instead, I'm just going to set the response. I'm going to write async. And what am I going to write? I'm going to say hello world. Request was context.request.path. So I'm going to actually look at the path information being sent in and show it, even though we're going to create this, this response on every single call. So I have to await it. And I'm going to need a couple more usings here. .hosting and Microsoft.ASP.NET Core HTTP, which is what's going to give us that write async call on the response. Let's see if we can build this. See if I haven't made any mistakes. Woohoo! So then, can we run it? Now, listening. Now, if we go to uh, our web server, we're seeing the hello world return, and then the request path is actually just the root. 
but this is responding to every request coming into the server. So we can say foo bar quux or whatever we want to put, and that'll be the path we're actually looking for. So we're actually responding to it with our own tiniest piece of middleware. So you can see some of the concepts that uh, RC2 is changing in the way it's building this stuff. Um, pretty close to what RC1 was doing, except it's elaborated a little on how the APIs are written. And so most projects are going to need to change some APIs as well as namespaces and as well as how it's actually hosting that uh, JSON, that runtime in the uh, project.json. You'll be able to get this source at, again, github.com slash Sean Wildermuth slash ASP.NET RC2 from scratch. Thanks for watching.